Hi everybody, this is B4H Fireside Chat uh, and today we have with us uh, Kasper Niebe. He's uh, one of the founder of the project uh, Poyo Poyo and it, it, that was one of our awardees from last edition. Hi Kasper, how are you today? Hi, hi, good evening. It's so, evening here in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we want to know everything about the project, how the platform is working. So uh, please tell us about the what is the Poyo Poyo and how is it working? Yes, thank you, Ivan. Um, first of all, the, the Polio Polio project is uh, a peer-to-peer -peer donation platform allowing donors to provide physical products to, to people in need. That's basically um, the, the shortest way to put it. Um, there was uh, a, a, a desire for me to, to allow donations to go directly to the recipients without passing through uh, traditional charitable organizations. And we do so by, by using distributed ledger technology and, and implying conditional payments and smart contracts. Um, the, it all started by me reading an article in, in the New York Times about the child death rate in Venezuela. And I wanted to make a difference, so I couldn't find any uh, charitable organization or NGO that had that specific uh, purpose and read that there was a lot of corruption and, and mistrust to char charitable organizations. So I simply decided to build one of my own. And that's, that's how uh, Polio Polio came to be. Uh, and it's been uh, a really uh, mind-blazingly fast ride. It's, it's, the platform is only a year and a half old, um, two years since the idea was conceived. And today, uh, and, and since we last talked, um, the Danish Financial Authority have uh, approved our model. Uh, we are now in the process of becoming a formal registered Danish uh, charitable organization. Um, that has turned into some sort of political fight because uh, the model that we use, uh, it, it doesn't have a charitable organization. Um, it, it actually makes each donor a charitable organization and each right. particular donation uh, is a, a fundraising or um, so, so we don't fit into any existing model. So the, the Danish Board of Charitable Organizations, it's a political organ. Um, it's now uh, looking into our case uh, because it's become obvious to them that they need to, to somehow alter the, the current legislation on charitable organizations. So if everything works out as intended, um, our project will be uh, the reason that uh, first uh, Denmark changes the, the, the laws and regulations on charitable organizations. And as a result of that, the EU uh, will need to adopt that as well. So it's quite interesting. And I had no idea it would come this far uh, back when I started. Um, yeah, it's, next it's, week uh, on, it's yeah, very interesting. It's and uh, you actually answered Two or following of my questions, and, ah, uh, what was your motivation <laughs> to doing that, and what was the update from the last six months? But uh, ah. yeah, that's that's great. If uh, if this can make some changes, this is uh, just just great. Uh, can you explain Absolutely. us how how this donation working? Because you said that it's not yeah. for money; it's for the physical good donation. Exactly. And, and, and that's where it, uh, things usually get a bit tricky because the poorest people, they usually don't have access to either smartphone, uh, uh, laptops or internet connections uh, at all. But uh, you, in, in most places, uh, the, the products that they so uh, badly need, they are actually available in the local area. They just can't afford it. So, so the model is actually built uh, in, in a way that allows uh, an applicant on the platform to apply for a product with the provider of the product. Um, the, it, it's actually quite, the process is quite simple actually. The, the, the merchants or the providers of products, it can be small farms, uh, local shops, merchants, uh, even uh, booths at local markets, they would, um, they, they uh, are usually a bit better off than the poorest in the local community. And therefore they will usually have access to a smartphone. And they simply add a product to the platform, uh, just like you would add a normal product to a web shop. 
those products are then um, visible to applicants and they can apply for a donation that pays for that product. Uh, the applications are visible on the, the PolioPolio Polio platform and donors can then see the applications and choose whether or not they would like to make a donation. When they make a donation, the platform creates a shared wallet between the, uh, the donor on one side and the shop on the other side. Um, and that way there are no intermediaries. It, it's actually only those two parties will ever be able to access the funds that gets donated. And the, the the payment to the to the shared wallet is actually conditioned. So so there are rules about when can which of the parties spend from that shared wallet. To the merchant, the the condition is that the applicant must log into the platform and confirm receipt of the product, the physical product. So they log onto the platform. They might actually borrow the the smartphone of the the provider of the product, and they then uh, confirm receipt. Once they do that, the funds are released and the, the merchant can withdraw the funds from the shared wallet and hand over the product. So there's an incentive for the, the merchant to act honestly because they get a, an increased revenue. The applicant, of course, gets, gets access to a product they otherwise couldn't afford and the donor uh, is, is relatively sure uh, that mm. the product was actually provided. Of course, there's uh, uh, a chance or risk of abuse on the platform, but we provide as much data as we can to allow the donor to make an informed decision. So we don't uh, make any false guarantees about uh, it being completely uh, fraud proof, um, but, but we allow the donor as much transparency as we can to make them make it possible to make a, a pretty good assessment of whether or not uh, an applica applicant is legit or not. Sure. So we don't let's, let's just ask. Let's just yeah. add that we are talking about the Venezuela in this particular case. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, but exactly. it can be used for any other any other countries. What would yes. the, what, what is the the currency that people need to to use to donate? Can they do uh, it with the regular money, or they just need to change it for uh, some cryptocurrency? I'm really glad you asked because right now we are limited to only accepting cryptocurrency as donation. And it's limited to only uh, the, the currency of the platform that we built the project on. It's called Obite. It's not very known, but it's ba it basically has the same features as Ethereum, uh, only it doesn't have blocks and miners and it doesn't have uh, these rather high transaction fees. So it's... it's um, it's basically the same as that. And the currency on that platform uh, is the only one that can currently be used. But actually, I'm really glad you asked because on Tuesday, uh, I'm meeting with a company called Coinify. It's a Danish company that has uh, a license to operate as a payment processor, meaning that they can accept payments using Visa or MasterCard, and they can then convert the payments into uh, a cryptocurrency. So that will definitely open up uh, the potential of the Polio Polio platform to a far wider range of donors, even donors that have no clue about how uh, cryptocurrencies work or or how they where they can be purchased. Um, I forgot to mention that another important part of the model is that in case the, the applicant never confirms receipt, the donor yeah. actually gets the funds back after 30 days. So okay. that's, that's the main problem of regular or fiat currencies that we have to be able to find someone who, are, who is able to make the transaction backwards in case, in case there's never a confirmation. Uh, and that's I'm going to meet on Tuesday. And luckily, the company that I'm meeting with is only 800 meters from where I live here in Denmark. So oh. it's, it's relatively close. Um, and, and it saves me a lot of uh, legal trouble because they have the licenses required by the Danish Financial Supervisory Authority. So and, and, and we can continue to exist without the need of, a, of an actual license, but just an approval of our model from the FSA here in Denmark. So that's, uh, that's quite a, a good improvement uh, and, and something that will definitely um, uh, feed into the scaling of the platform uh, and making it possible for us. Right now, we are 
currently kind of limit limiting things because we if we are very aware that if we scale it too much on the applicant side we are going to lack donors because right now it's limited to only those who know how to purchase uh, yeah. the cryptocurrency so if we scale it too fast in one side the other side will will not be able to catch up so by uh, hopefully getting the uh, agreement on tuesday we'll be able to to scale up uh, the donor side uh, remarkably and then we can scale up the other side as well um, so we are definitely working hard on on uh, improving and scaling the platform and and we're definitely very aware of uh, all the regulatory um, difficulties that we are going to face during this um, this project oh, that's uh, that's that's fantastic and we wish you luck for that and uh, saying that shortly the platform what is doing is uh, just anybody can buy the food for the people in venezuela or any exactly. other product it's that just, just resume it's uh, i can buy the, the 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 vegetable for some people in, in venezuela through that platform and this is fantastic so yes. uh, if anybody wants to donate or want to know more about the project where can they find you uh, where they can uh, donate uh, where, where is the platform uh, the platform is available on poliopolio.org uh, you simply just uh, go visit the website and there's an about section uh, it lists all the people who are volunteering to build this uh, we don't have any funding at all um, we don't want any funding at all we have uh, annual operational costs at uh, 60 dollars per year because all who are involved in this project are actually donating their spare time their server resources, their network, their bandwidth, their everything. So, so uh, the project management tools are sponsored as well. So we have all the, the tools and, and the, the infrastructure, so to speak, in place already. So we don't need any funding. Uh, and everyone who's helping out on the project uh, can be found on the About section on the polyopolio.org website. Uh, and that's also where you can f create yourself as uh, a provider of products or uh, you can create a, a profile to apply for product. Um, if you want to become a donor, you don't actually need to create a profile. Uh, we allow anyone to make a donation as long as they are able to make the donation using the cryptocurrency uh, of the Obite platform. That's, that's fantastic. We wish you all the luck for that Tuesday. So thank you very will. much, Casper. It was a pleasure welcome. to have you here. And uh, it's always and a pleasure I to be here. to see you <laughs> soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Ivan. -bye,